ஆர் யூ போவன் வணக்கம் ஐம் வயோனி டிமெல் திஸ் இஸ் பாஸ்டன் லங்கா நியூஸ் பிரிங்கிங் யூ நியூஸ் வியூஸ் அண்ட் என்டர்டெயின்மெண்ட் ஃப்ரம் பாஸ்டன் அண்ட் யூஎஸ்ஏ Robert Blake is impatient about reconciliation and accountability in post-war Sri Lanka. Oh really? Sri Lankan government's inquiry into the country's civil war is fundamentally flawed, says Amnesty International. The talk about conspiracy to assassinate General Sarat Fonseca, is that a conspiracy? Robert Blake, a US Assistant Secretary of State for the South and Central Asian Affairs, will visit Sri Lanka on September 14th, according to some news sources. During the visit, Mr. Blake is scheduled to meet government officials and political leaders, these sources revealed. His visit was postponed due to the flight cancellations in the US resulting to adverse weather conditions caused by Hurricane Irene. Meanwhile, a US embassy spokesperson told news media that no indication has yet been made by the US State Department as to when Blake's visit would be rescheduled. Boston Lanka spoke to Ru Freeman, Sri Lankan-born political activist and writer in USA about the Blake's visit and the US Sri Lanka relations. A uh, Ru, uh, a secretary uh, Blake plans to visit uh, Sri Lanka uh, in next few days. Uh, talking to Tamil diaspora groups uh, recently, uh, Secretary Blake had expressed his concern and impatience about reconciliation and accountability in post-war uh, Sri Lanka. Uh, do you have any response to that? You know, I'm not sure Robert Blake has the moral right to talk about accountability given the horrendous crimes against humanity that have been perpetrated by U.S. forces in Iraq and Afghanistan just to start with. The other lack of accountability in the treatment of prisoners and so on. But certainly it is good for any human being to be concerned about any other set of human beings. Um, impatience is another matter altogether. The issues at hand are reconciliation and accountability. And the time frames for reconciliation are always arbitrary and if done right, take a long time. We are talking here of a pretty complex mix of competing chauvinisms that feed on each other. One-upmanship, grievances, aspirations, aspirations dressed as grievances, grievances inflated with the, you know, mythology and most of all a bloody conflict that dragged for 30 years. Terrorism was the biggest stumbling block to any kind of reconciliation and that was removed. But the end of a war does not magically erase wounds and scars from the, you know, the physical landscape and those pertaining to psychological uh, sensibilities. I think it's easy to be impatient, but it is more important not to commit errors along the way that could explode into a whole new set of problems. There are things that have to be done immediately, clearing of landmines, rebuilding and reconstruction, putting in the infrastructure such as roads and electricity, water supplies, hospitals, schools, rebuilding livelihoods by providing tools and credit facilities, as well as removing restrictions on fishing, the gradual phasing out of military presence and a return to civilian administration, rehabilitation of ex-combatants, and so on. And I think there has been uh, solid progress on all those fronts. All elections except for the Northern Provincial Council, uh, elections which have even been tentatively scheduled for early 2012, have been held. Emergency laws have been relaxed and are to be removed completely. In the U.S., we should not forget the draconian laws imposed after 9-11, such as the Patriot Act, are still remaining in full force. And over 95% of the 295,000 IDPs have been resettled. Of over 11,000 LTT cars that are surrounded or captured, only a few thousand remain detained. And all um, child combatants, uh, which, you know, who numbered over 500, have been reunited with their parents. Um, the ex-combatants are receiving skills training and given the opportunity to sit for their exams. The psychological needs are being provided for through drama, music, sports, meditation. Um, so the must-do things have been done to a large extent. Um, when we talk about accountability, you have to think about what's the issue here. These allegations are made by people who are ignorant and co compromised with little or no substantiation. If he's talking about the Darusman report, it's full of holes. If he's talking about Channel 4 productions, it's even more pathetic. I think there's a process of truth and reconciliation in Sri Lanka. The accusers were offered the opportunity to make representations, and they didn't. Uh, they chose not to participate. 
Ahead of Secretary Blake's reported visit to Colombo, Tamils for Obama, the organization based in Boston urged him to understand the enormous suffering of Tamil civilians over the years. Assistant Secretary Blake should exert pressure on the Sri Lankan government and not on the victimized population, said the spokesperson. Rue Freeman again, talking about Secretary Blake's concern and impatience about reconciliation and accountability in post-war Sri Lanka. When Robert Blake says he's impatient and concerned about accountability, we need to say, uh, you know, oh, really, we can talk about Guantanamo Bay. We can talk about summary dismissal of cases where U.S. troops have been uh, accused of uh, atrocities and crimes against humanity. Um, a case in point is the murder of two Pakistani men by Raymond Davis, for instance, at the ground level, or the drone attack on civilians and the destruction of an entire country, Iraq, at the global level. Uh, immunity for George Bush, who went to war for no reason at all and helped cause over a million deaths, and so on. In Sri Lanka, the security forces saved close to 300,000 people held hostage by uh, a terrorist organization that was deemed, even by the United States, as the world's most ruthless uh, terrorist organization. And throughout the conflict, the state provided for the health and education of, for the people of Jaffna uh, and, and other parts of the north and the east before that was uh, uh, freed from LTT control. Uh, they ensured that there was enough food for people living in areas controlled by the LTT. And in fact, facilitated the transportation of essential items, knowing full well that the LTT would rob what they wanted. And all of this is accounted for. Post-war, the care and facilities provided for both civilians and, uh, civilians and combatants indicate a kind of largest that's palpably absent in similar situations elsewhere in the world. Um, if Blake is impatient, his impatience is due to a monumental failure to access and examine the facts. Uh, Ru, uh, in one of your uh, recent articles, uh, you have written that um, I hope that Barack Obama decides sooner rather than later to reclaim the foreign policy mantle of his presidency. Um, what do you mean by that? Um, uh, could you please elaborate on that? Um, I'm sure you remember that uh, at the end of the Democratic primary in 2008, there was all that time when it was clear that Barack Obama had won the primary and yet Hillary Clinton would not concede. They had several meetings before she agreed to do so. I firmly believe, and this is clear from the course of events after Barack Obama took office, that those negotiations included her being given free reign on the foreign policy front, which was the one, you know, uh, uh, sort of lapse in her candidacy when she was talking about how much experience she had on foreign policy. She actually had pretty much zero. Um, what has Barack Obama put his mark on since he took office in terms of the global scene? He gave an excellent speech in Cairo. He won the Nobel Prize for Peace and gave another speech crediting the American people for his win. Um, both happened in the first few months of his presidency. Since then, he personally gave the orders for the rescue of uh, Captain Phillips, who was captured by Somali pirates. When he was in the Situation Room observing the capture and de death of uh, Osama bin Laden, Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton has made error after error during her visits overseas. She declared that the federal government would sue the state of Arizona while on a TV show in Ecuador. Um, she goes to Mexico and asks who painted the lady of Guadalupe. With regard to Afghanistan, she's on record saying she doesn't take the opinions of the American people into consideration, even though it is the American people who are out there fighting and dying and also killing a bunch of other people. She was woefully misinformed on the situation in Libya, and her statements on Sri Lanka during the war was outrageously misinformed and bordered on belligerents, words that she had to retract via subordinates such as Bob Casey as chair of the Senate subcommittee on South Asia in the aftermath of the war. As a result of her statements and the actions against the government of Sri Lanka that she supervised or condoned, Sri Lanka, Pakistan, and China have grown closer. Can the U.S. afford to be left out of such partnerships when it is trying to wage either military and psychological or economic war on most of the people in that part of the world? It cannot. Barack Obama has always struck me as a pragmatist, but also someone who understands nuance. He is not somebody who condescends to other cultures, given his heritage and his upbringing, as well as uh, his you know, international education. That is the person that the world embraced in 2008 and 2009, but the world did not get him. The world got Hillary Clinton. I mean, as an American citizen, I'm certainly happy to have him leading the domestic agenda, but as a global citizen, I'm deeply disappointed that his hand is not evident in the foreign policy agenda.
Thank you, Roo. Uh, that was Roo Freeman joining us from Pennsylvania. The Sri Lankan government's inquiry into the country's civil war is fundamentally flawed and provides no accountability for atrocities, according to a new Amnesty International report. According to the Amnesty International, this report was an attempt to expose the shortcomings of the inquiry by the Lessons Learned and Reconciliation Commission in investigating the allegations of war crimes and crimes against humanity leveled against both government forces and the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam. For the last two years, the Sri Lankan government has used the LLRC to try to buy time and to deflect international pressures for accountability. Uh, this is simply one of the latest in a long series of similar ad hoc commissions that the Sri Lankan government has used to, to put off international pressure. The LLRC was established by Sri Lankan President Mahinda Rajapaksa in May 2010 after he made a joint commitment to an accountability process in Sri Lanka alongside UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. The Sri Lankan government keeps saying that uh, instead of focusing on justice, instead of looking at accountability and what happened in the past, people should just look at the future. But what we see is that impunity and lack of accountability is still going on in Sri Lanka at two years after the end of the conflict. And it's important for that cycle of impunity to be broken. It's important for the Sri Lankan people to think that justice belongs to them also. And in order to do that, they need international support, which can only come through an independent international accountability mechanism. A conspiracy to assassinate General Sadat Fonseca, who is presently incarcerated, was reported last week by some Sri Lankan news sources. According to these sources, a letter had been sent by Defence Ministry advisor Henda Vitarana to the CID requesting to commence investigations on this conspiracy. According to Henda Vitarana, this plan by LTTE to kill General Fonseca was revealed by LTTE suspects in Bogambara prison. These sources also points out that it was Henda Vitarana who played the main role in sending Fonseca to jail by furnishing a false intelligence report to the Rajapaksa regime that Fonseca was seeking to overthrow the government and capture power. That concludes our news edition. We meet you again with another news edition of news, views and entertainment from Boston and USA. Till then, goodbye.